Now you're probably very aware of 5G at this point, the fifth generation cellular wireless network. It's been talked about quite a bit. With it though, you've probably also heard a ton of other terms just thrown next to the word 5G, like sub six, millimeter wave, and now being talked about a lot, C-band. What is C-band though? And why recently was there a huge fight between the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, and all of the carriers? And why is C-band kind of a big deal? Let's talk. Firstly, all cell phone signals are carried over frequencies. And without getting too deep into it, 5G can run on a much larger swath of frequencies than 4G can. From running on the current relatively low frequencies that 4G runs on to the super high millimeter wave frequencies that you see all those crazy speed tests on the internet from. Part of the benefit of 5G is that it can run on a lot of these less crowded frequencies, which gives it a lot more capacity and a lot more speed. Now, there are other technologies involved in 5G that increase the speed and the capacity and latency and everything else, but for this video, we're gonna focus mostly on frequencies. Now, in the US, companies bid on various frequencies when the government puts them up for auction for private use. Now here's a quick diagram of various applications and agencies that are running on all of the different frequencies in the United States. As you can see, it's a bit crowded. Here we have those current 4G bands under 2 gigahertz, usually referred to as low band. And here we have millimeter wave, aka high band that are closer to like the 30 to 40 gigahertz way up here. In addition to these, 5G runs on mid band frequencies that sit in the two to six gigahertz range, sometimes called sub six because it's below six gigahertz. Generally, as these frequencies get higher, there's a lot more available bandwidth. And so speeds generally also get higher, but also these frequencies by nature cannot travel as far and they're a lot more susceptible to being blocked by things. Millimeter wave, for example, can be blocked by your hand even as opposed to low band frequencies that can actually go through buildings to give you signal inside. Mid band or sub six is sort of in this little interesting sweet spot where it has much higher speeds because there's a lot more bandwidth available, but it's also gonna reach a lot further than millimeter wave and not be blocked by as many things. MediaTek, who partnered with me to make this video, just launched their first ever chipset that supports millimeter wave called the Dimensity 1050. And it can actually connect to sub six and millimeter wave simultaneously compared to some of their competitors that can only connect to millimeter wave and LTE at the same time, which in the real world translates to 53% faster speeds. Here in the US though, a large collection of that mid-band frequency is called C-band. Now these frequencies have mostly been used for satellite TV since the 1970s. Now since then they have largely been replaced by much newer and smaller dish systems that run on a frequency that's a bit higher called the Ku band, which is about 12 to 18 gigahertz. And what satellite companies that are still running on C-band now have is much better digital encoding. So they can actually move their transmissions all up to the higher end of C-band, which frees up the rest of it for cellular networks. In an $81 billion auction that happened in 2021, Verizon and AT&T with about $68 billion got a large chunk of that C-band. T-Mobile actually spent $9 billion during that auction, but they already had a ton from their acquisition of Sprint. So all the carriers then proceeded to rush to build out their mid-band networks as fast as they could. And right before AT&T and Verizon were expected to turn theirs on, the FAA told them no. Now you might've heard this, all over the news, but long story short, there is a portion of frequencies that sits near the frequencies that AT&T and Verizon bought that is used for altimeters to measure the distance between the plane and the ground to help pilots land in low visibility conditions. Now, most altimeters block out those frequencies that the carriers were using, but some older ones don't. And so the FAA freaked out essentially saying that if Verizon and AT&T turned on their C-band networks, that planes would just fall out of the sky. Long story short, the carriers were allowed to continue, no planes crashed, and C-band is being as rapidly deployed as it can. 
Now the new MediaTek Dimensity 1050 can not only utilize the new C-band frequencies, but in places where there is only sub-6, it actually uses what's called 3CC, or 3 Carrier Component Aggregation, to combine three different frequencies of 5G and LTE and treat it as one large pipe, which enabled them to get a faster peak download speed of up to 4.6 gigabits per second, plus faster average speeds and greater 5G coverage. Okay, so why the rush to get C-band out as fast as possible? Well, as I've already mentioned, it kind of sits in a sweet spot between millimeter wave and low band. Here in NYC, for example, I was able to hit 300 megabits per second constantly, even while wandering around. Now, to be clear, C-band is not some crazy solution and the end-all be-all of 5G. As with all the carriers here in the US, they're going to deploy 5G on low band, mid band, including C-band, and millimeter wave. So you'll have millimeter wave in city centers and anywhere there's a dense amount of people like stadiums, for example, providing the fastest speeds. Then you'll have sub six, C band, mid band, spreading from there to fill in the gaps and provide fast speeds further out. And then from there, you'll have low band beyond that. And your phone will just switch seamlessly between all of them. And where previously you would only find support for the full gambit of 5G frequencies on more expensive devices, the new aforementioned MediaTek Dimensity 1050 chipset actually supports low band, mid band, including C band, and millimeter wave. And so the full stack of 5G frequencies will start to be available on much less expensive phones. Think even sub $400 phones. There you go. I hope that explains what C-band is and how 5G frequencies kind of work as a whole. Shout again to MediaTek for sponsoring this video. You can check them out at the link below what they're doing with 5G as well as their new phones with the Dimensity 1050 chips. Also, check out the channel. If you like to see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. I'm pretty sure that cop car is just circling us. He's literally just driving around the park in circles. Just to annoy me, probably. Did you get the shot? Cool. <laughs> Truck. What is that sound even? I don't even understand. Why is the truck making that sound? It doesn't sound good. It doesn't. <laughs> truck needs, the truck has a problem is what it sounds like. I don't think it's supposed to make that sound. I love that I've become also a subject of this guy's new photo series, The Red Wall. He's over there, he's still taking shots. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Tag me. A lot of sounds. New York City, man. That just keeps going up and He's just, just staring at us like, you trying to record? Yeah, right. Good for you. It's a loud truck. One day they'll all be electric. Can't wait for that day. Okay. Sounds of the city. Check out at the link below what they're doing with phone call.